in the previous video, we introduced the concept of a vector and looked at how to write vectors in component form. In this video, we're going to turn our attention to vector algebra. So vector algebra has um, two basic operations. Um, we have vector addition. Right? This is an operation which takes two vectors and adds them together to form a new vector. And we also have scalar multiplication. This is an operation that multiplies a vector by a scalar. So remember that a scalar um, in the context that we're working is just a real number. So we'll be able to multiply a vector by a number two or five or negative three fourths, uh, whatever real number we want. Um, and so we'll be able to figure out what these new vec resulting vectors would be. Right? Now these, opera these two operations are defined exactly how um, you would want them to be defined um, to be as easy as possible to, to compute. So if we're given two vectors, um, so I'm going to take a vector u, which will be given by the components u1, u2, and u3, and another vector v, which will be given by v1, v2, and v3, um, and I'm giving, for the scalar multiplication, I'm giving a real number A, right? So if you're not familiar with this notation that I just wrote, it simply means that A is an element of the set of real numbers. So this is just saying that A is a real number. Then we're going to define the following operations on these vectors. Um, U plus V, this is vector addition is going to be defined by just adding the corresponding components of the vectors together. So the first component of the sum is going to be the sum of the first components of the sum and vectors, so u1 plus v1. The second component will be the sum of the corresponding second components of u and v, and the third component will be the sum of the corresponding components of u and v. So this, the vector sum u plus v is the vector with components u1 plus v1, u2 plus v2, and u3 plus v3. Okay. If we multiply the vector u by the real number a, this is scalar multiplication. We're multiplying it by a scalar a. Um, all we do is multiply each component of u by a. So this would be a times u1 a times u2, and a times u3. Right, so we have vector addition, we have scalar modification, and just to be complete, I'm also going to write down um, vector subtraction. However, vector subtraction is just a combination of the previous two. If we choose the real number a to be negative 1, um, we could find negative of a vector. And then if we, instead of adding, instead of adding v to u, if we'd add negative v to u, um, we would get subtraction. So this would end up being u1 minus v1, u2 minus v2, and u3 minus v3. Right. So as I said, this is just a combination of the first two. So to some degree, this doesn't need its own definition, but we'll indicate it here just to be safe. Right? So these are the operations that underlie vector algebra, the vector addition, scalar multiplication, and then combining to get vector subtraction. One last thing to point out about these definitions. Um, the definition I gave here were for vectors with three coordinates, so vectors in R3. If I wanted to um, define all of these for R2, for vectors in the plane, that's easily done. Just it, We just erase all of the u3 and v3 terms throughout. So the operations still work in R2, just with one fewer coordinate. So let's look at these operations in context of an example. Right, so let's let u be the vector negative uh, 2, 2, 4.
and v be the vector 3, negative 5, 1. So I have these two vectors in R3. So suppose I want to find the vector 2u plus 3v. So the first thing we need to do is scalar uh, multiply both of the vectors u and v by 2 and 3, respectively. So this is 2 times the vector negative, negative 2, 2, 4. plus 3 times the vector, 3, negative 5, 1. When we scalar multiply, um, we have to multiply each component by the scalar. So this first vector, 2u, would be negative 4, 4, 8, when we multiply each by 2. The second vector, when we scalar multiply by 3, we have to multiply each component by 3, so, neg so 9, negative 15, and 3. And then we add component-wise. So the first component is negative 4 plus 9. That's 5. The second component is 4 plus negative 15. That's negative 11. And the third component is 8 plus 3, which is positive 11. So 2u plus 3v is the vector 5, negative 11, positive 11. If we wanted to do a subtraction, for example, maybe we want to do 3u minus v. Right, this would be 3 times the vector negative 2, 2, 4, minus the vector 3, negative 5, 1. So we would get negative 6, 6, 12, minus 3, negative 5, 1. So we would subtract component-wise. We have negative 6 minus 3 is negative 9. 6 minus negative 5 is positive 11. And 12 minus 1 is, is also positive 11. So we would get the vector negative 9, 11, 11. And last one, we can also um, multiply by a non-integral scalar, so something like a fraction. So let's say we wanted to find the magnitude of one half of vector u. Okay. So um, we know that one half times u is just multiplying each component in u by one half. So that would be negative one, one, two. We can find the magnitude by squaring each component and adding them together. So the square root of 1 plus 1 plus 4, which is the square root of 6. So the magnitude of 1 half u is the square root of 6. And so these are just some uh, basic examples um, of combining vectors using scalar multiplication, vector addition, and vector subtraction. Um, and pretty much any example will be done in a similar fashion. These two operations we've just described have geometric meanings, which are sometimes helpful um, to understand how the algebra is working. So we want to look quickly at the geometric interpretations of vector addition and scalar multiplication. We're actually going to start with scalar multiplication. So if I want to, if I want to look at the sc a scalar multiplication of the form a times u, where a is a positive real number, so this resulting vector, a times u, it's going to be a vector in the same direction as u, the original vector. Uh, but its magnitude will be multiplied by a. So if I want to look at a vector like 2 times u, this vector would have the same direction as u, but the magnitude would be twice as big. It would be twice as long as an arrow in the plane. Okay. Similarly, if I want to look at a times u scalar multiplication with a negative scalar, 
the negative scalar is going to turn the vector around and it's going to have the opposite direction. Um, as u does. So whatever direction u is pointing, a u if a is negative will be pointing in the exact opposite direction. And its magnitude is multiplied by the absolute value of a. All right, so the negative part of the scalar will turn the vector around in the opposite direction, and the positive part of the magnet of the of the scalar, the absolute value of that scalar, will be the multiplying factor on the magnitude. Okay. And then vector addition, u plus v. Um, this is a vector um, that's obtained uh, by following u and then following v from the terminal point of u. Right, and so I will draw a picture of all three of these things so that the, the exact meanings are understood. But the idea in this one is we start at the origin, we move in the direction of u, the appropriate amount, uh, the appropriate length indicated by the magnitude of u, and then from that point we follow the vector v. We go in that direction for the magnitude of v. All right, so for a graphical um, look at um, the geometric interpretations that I just mentioned. Let's look at uh, the following. Let's say I had a vector u, and I'm going to draw it in standard position. It's going to be in red here. All right, there's a vector u, and I want to also draw another vector v that's in standard position, but I'm going to draw it like this. So each of those vectors have a certain, a specified direction, and there's a certain magnitude involved. That's the length of the arrows. Right. Right. So let's say I wanted to draw in here, let's say I wanted to draw the following vectors. I wanted to draw 2u, I want to draw negative u, and I want to draw u plus v. So this will illustrate all three of the geometric interpretations that I indicated uh, previously. Uh, scalar multiplication with a positive scalar, scalar multiplication with a negative scalar, um, in this case negative 1, and vector addition. So 2 times u, since 2 is positive, it's going to be a vector with the same in the same direction as u, but the magnitude multiplied by 2. And so if I want to draw this vector in standard, standard form, I'm going to draw it in blue here, it's going to go through u, and it's going to be approximately 2 times the length of u. Right, so that, that's roughly about twice the length. Um, so we're going to call that the vector 2 times u. If this were 3u, we would go out 3 times as far as u goes. If it was 4u, we would go out 4 times as far. If it were 1 half u, we would go out 1 half as far. And so that scalar could possibly, if it's less than 1, it could shrink u. But scalar multiplication by a positive number, we really want to just think of stretching or shrinking the vector u uh, based on the scale factor. All right, the second one is negative u. So negative, the fact that the coefficient in front of u, that scalar is negative, means we're going to go in the opposite direction. And since it's just negative 1u, we're not going to do anything with the length of u. So this is li quite literally just turning the vector around in the opposite direction and going out the same length. So this arrow in green is going to be negative u. Right? If, again, if it were negative 2u, the arrow would be in the opposite direction but twice as long. Right? Now lastly, u plus v. Um, so u plus v, the um, interpretation was we first follow vector u. So if I start at the origin, I'm going to move along arrow u up until the terminal point of u, which is the at the arrowhead in the, in the picture. 
And then from that point, I'm going to follow vector v. And so from that point, I'm going to go in the direction that v points um, for the length of vector v. Right, so remember, v was drawn in standard position, but we can locate v at any other point, and it's going to indicate that same direction and same magnitude. And so we would end up um, right around in this, in this point right here. And so that combination from the origin to there that I just drew in yellow, this would be the vector u plus v. So um, this is the geometric way that we can think of this. Um, the we won't do a lot with scalar multiplication or with the uh, vector addition geometrically, but we will sometimes think about um, scaling vectors um, both po with positive and negative scalars to behave in the way that we want them to. So the scalar multiplication is by far the most important operation to understand geometrically. So now that we have some vector operations, namely vector addition and scalar multiplication, uh, the next step is to look at some properties, um, some really basic properties that these operations satisfy. So here is a list of a bunch of properties, most of which would should be incredibly obvious to you. Uh, but just to be complete, we want to give the, give all the different properties that 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 hold. Um, so um, we have, in this case, u, v, and w are all vectors. They can either be an R2 or R3. It doesn't make a difference um, as long as they're all in the same. So as long as u and v, if, if we're looking at like the first property that u plus v equals v plus u, as long as both u and v are in R2 or both are in R3, um, then, then the property will hold. Um, and a and b here are just scalars. And so when you look through this, you should see a lot of familiar properties from um, arithmetic. So the first property, u plus v equals v plus u, is the commutative property of vector addition. The second property um, says we can reassociate the addition, so it's vector addition is associative. Um, the third bullet point has a zero vector. So the zero vector um, is just the vector where each component is equal to zero. So either zero, zero or zero, zero, zero. Um, we'll use that from time to time. Um, and we denote it by the zero with an arrow over it. Um, and that arrow it becomes important. It helps denote it from the scalar zero, which at various times we will need to distinguish. Um, if you add a vector u to its negative, you get the zero vector. We would expect that. Uh, the last two bullets on the first column are two different distributive properties. If we distribute a scalar over vector addition, or if we um, distribute vector a vector across a scalar addition, um, we get the appropriate distributive properties. And then the second column are just some really, really obvious properties of scalar multiplication. Multiplying a vector by the scalar one gives back the same vector you started with. Multiplying a vector by the scalar zero will produce the zero vector. Um, and then the last one will be, be important. Um, if we want to find the magnitude of a vector being scaled by, the, by a constant a, one approach we could do um, is to break it up as the absolute value of the scalar a multiplied by the magnitude of vector u. So I specified out what those bars mean because we use the same symbol for the absolute value of a real number and the magnitude of a vector, um, which sometimes causes confusion, but it really shouldn't because it's clear in this case that A is a, a real number because there's no arrow above it, whereas U is a vector because it's denoted with an arrow. Um, so we really want to... Um, pay attention to the notation, particularly that vector notation of using the arrows. It really helps. Um, it can, you can easily make mistakes if you forget to include that notation. Um, but anyway, these properties here are just ones we're going to use whenever we need them um, and just kind of implicitly use them a lot of times without even citing them. Um, but these should not be surprising to you. When we introduce vector products in the next couple sections, there will be some properties that those do not satisfy. And so um, in that case, we'll want to pay really close attention.
But vector addition and scalar multiplication um, work exactly the way that you would want them to. So for one last example in this video, um, let's look at this particular situation. So I have two points, uh, P and Q in the plane. So P is going to be negative two, four, one. And Q is going to be three, two, negative one. And now what I'd like to do is I'd like to find the point uh, which is one quarter of the way uh, from P to Q. Now there are a few different ways we could approach a problem like this. Um, we're going to approach it from the point point of view of vectors, um, because uh, that's what we're working with here. Um, so uh, what we want to do um, to do, use this with vectors is we first need to find the vector that goes from P to Q. Right, so we want the vector PQ. And so if we remember the way to do this is that um, we want to subtract the, co the corresponding components, starting with the component of Q and subtracting the component of P. Um, and so when we do this, um, when we do this, we get um, in the first component, three minus negative two, in the second component, two minus four, and in the third component, negative one minus one. So we're taking the Q coordinates and subtracting the P coordinates. And that gives us the vector 5, negative 2, negative 2. Right, so this is the vector that goes from P to Q. Right. Now, if we, want, um, if we want to find the point that's one quarter of the way from P to Q, the idea is that we're going to then start, we're going to start at P, um, so we know that we're going to start at the point at the vector p, which would be negative two, four, one. We're going to think of p now as a vector. So this is the vector from the origin to the point p, and then we're going to travel along the vector p q, but we only want to go one fourth of the way. So after we travel negative two, four, one, and we travel to the point p, we want to travel one fourth of that way from p to q. which would be one fourth times the vector five, negative two, negative two. So we just need to compute this uh, vector expression. So this will be negative two, four, one, plus five fourths, negative one half, and negative one half. All right, so we have negative two plus five fourths, which will be negative three fourths. We have four plus negative one half, so that would be positive seven halves. And we have one plus negative one half, which is positive one half. All right, so our point that we want will be the point negative three fourths, seven halves, one half. So this will be our point that is one fourth of the way from P to Q.